Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Backlog Banter. I'm your boy, Abram, joined as usual by Tucker Hazel. And today, Tucker, we are going to talk about the Switch remake of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Do a little review, if you will. But before we share our thoughts on the game, audience members, if you want to share your thoughts, join our Discord link, as usual, top of the description while you're down there rooting around for fucking acorns and pieces of power as you do in Link's Awakening. Click like subscribe the bell as well there's all kinds of things my twitter is down there so it's a, it's a good place to be but tucker we did the plugs we had to do the intro three times because we're, you know? we're a little bit rusty but tucker you were a little bit rusty on video games as a whole until sure. you played Link's awakening got you back into the fold now you've gone ahead and bought sega genesis classics collection <laughs> you're back in it yep but Link's awakening tucker how did you like the game now i am if you've been following along at home, audience members, I am a newer Zelda fan. Aside from Breath of the Wild, I didn't play fully play any Zelda game till last year when I played Link to uh, Link to the Past, which we reviewed yes. on our channel. If I remember, card in the corner, and then we also reviewed uh, Link Between Worlds back to back, which was really fun. Got me into the flow of 2D Zelda for the first time, and I picked up Link Awakening. Uh, a little bit after that, excited to get into another one, and, and I kind of kept putting it off. I was like, oh, okay, but I was I was hearing a lot of good stuff about it, and I finally just bit the bullet. And I think this is a really interesting game, but I don't think it holds up to either of the other ones that I played, to be honest. So, from my perspective, <coughs> like I fucking die over here. If I died talking about Link's Awakening, I mean that'd be a fitting way to go. But I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to tell you that I played this game first at lunch, right? Yeah. Um, and then messed around with it a little bit more after. But I played the game once and then played a little bit of it in the hero mode just to just get back in. Um, sure. So I haven't played a little bit of time. It's been probably a year since I played the game. That said, this is my favorite 2D Zelda title. Okay. Um, and for me, a lot of that success comes down to the game's aesthetic, its world, Kahulan Island, the people in it. Because the gameplay is pretty standard 2D Zelda. A lot yeah. of the a lot of the tropes, a lot of the items, all the dungeon mechanics and gimmicks, you can find other Zelda titles, but I think the way that they're contextualized here is so fun and so fresh. But I think on the whole, it's it's modernized visually, of course, yeah. but mechanically they tweaked some things, but they don't go particularly far. It's it is pretty much a tile for tile remake of the game for better and yeah. worse. Yeah, and I think that is, in all honesty, I'm, I'm reviewing from a fresh perspective. I've never played the original, and, and I honestly don't know that much about it. Watching a little bit of footage from the original, it's pretty impressive how they were able yeah. to one-to-one -one recreate the island uh, and, and, and the game as a whole. I think that all the changes that they made to the remake are... It, improve the game this is a better this is the best version to play at least from my perspective not having played the other ones um but a lot of stuff in the in the remake i think is is why i like the game so much i, I think it's a base game that i'm a little bit middling on though it's a zelda game it's very well designed it is totally solid it's a it is a gr great video good to great video game i think just from my perspective as a new 2d zelda fan there are some things that i i felt were a little lacking yeah, and I think some of some of the the lacking elements are because this game was situated pretty early on in Zelda's life. One hundred percent. In in the context of the Link to the Past style Zelda games. Yeah. Um, and the fact that Link's Awakening was in many ways kind of a an analog to Link to the Past, being you know here's the Game Boy two D Zelda. We got Zelda on the go. It's pretty much the same the same formula, right? Yeah. Um, but I so I think a lot of the issues persist. Uh, I don't think the game is incredibly intuitive in certain segments. I, I think yes. that this is one you got to play with a guide. Uh -huh. um, as, as I did. As, oh, as I did too, because th does the crocodile want the fucking dog food or does he want the bananas or the, the, the Yoshi oh, doll? I, right? I tried giving him bananas. That was one of my first things. Didn't work. Yeah. So, so there's, there's a weird shit like that, like 90s design philosophy definitely informs this game. But for me, it doesn't take away from everything the game does so well. Yeah. So let's first just talk about the aesthetic, which I think is probably actually the strongest part of this game, at least in my opinion. I think that the visual style, visual overhaul just does wonders to give the world a unique charm. All the characters are so well animated. And even though they're tiny and chibi and little toy versions, 
it has a lot of a lot of charm just oozing out of every corner and i would find myself just looking at a new background element and being like wow the lighting on the fact the lighting effects on that are so incredible and it really feels like you can reach out and touch it and i'm very glad that they went with a unique visual style for this one and not just yeah. another wind waker toon link kind of thing um because this just sets it apart and, and it gives it its own vibe and i really appreciate that yeah i i like the art style uh i honestly don't have especially strong feelings about it one way or the other mm. i think what's most impressive is how well realized it is like you said with the yeah. character models the lighting the animation it's very impressive i think it's one yeah. of the most impressive games on switch visually because it has a concept and it executes on it so well mm. um but for me, the success of the game's aesthetic is more in terms of like character design and the sure. design of Kahulan Island, which I think are just so inspired and great. I love the crocodiles. I love so many of the NPCs. I, I think that the overall design of the island is, is cohesive in a way that makes it feel like a real place, while also still having enough variety in, in, its, in its pretty small location that it's fun to explore. Mm. I, I think from, from that more intrinsic design perspective, the game really succeeds for me. So I, I'm, of, I'm of two minds with the Koha Island as, as a location, its inhabitants, all of that. I think that from a overall map perspective, it's impressive how much stuff they crammed into here. You got, you know, a, a small mountain area at the top, but yeah. big enough for it to feel like it's, you know, impactful. Um, you've got your forest, you've got your desert, you've got your beach, you've got your uh, graveyard, all sorts of stuff. It's all crammed in there and, and you don't really feel like it's natural how things flow from one to another. Yeah. And I, I really thought that was impressive. I mean, I did find it interesting to explore. I think there are certain elements uh, that make it, so you have to find weird pathways around things that can kind of be obnoxious if you're going to backtrack or look for secret seashells. Um, but on the whole, the map is, is really good. I came into this with really high expectations of the characters. Um, I of hearing you talk about the game and how much you enjoyed the characters, Kyle Bossman from Easy Allies, Tim Geddes from uh, from Kind of Funny. Everyone's always talking about how this game and its characters have so much charm and you, how you connect to them and you feel bad when you have to let the windfish wake up and then they disappear. Um, I didn't feel that. I think that the characters design wise in the remake are really charming and fun, but they only have like one line of dialogue and their names are crocodile and man with shovel and stuff like that on the whole i know there are obviously Marin and taryn yeah. and a couple of other ones but when when you're talking to witch and and crocodile and rabbit i really don't feel like the connection is there and i was i was really underwhelmed by the characters on the whole so i don't really give a fuck about the story when it comes to zelda games i know yeah. sue me some people really get up in arms about it mm -hmm. but what I love about the game's characters here is that there's almost a Disney-esque quality to them. Sure. I, I think it's really charming encountering like the animal village where all the inhabitants are animals or the crocodile painter on the beach or the other one who lives in the cabana. His name is Sale. I forget the other one's name. It's got like a French name. I think these are just really charming characters visually. And I, and I think that they add to the, the overall succinct and heartwarming narrative of the game sure. without making it overly cumbersome. Yeah, I, I don't remember a single line of dialogue from the game, mm -hmm. but I remember the raccoon you encounter. I remember all of these things. And, and it's when I watch a Disney film, it's not necessarily about the characters from a, from like a writing perspective. It's from a feel sure. perspective. I like the feel of a Disney film. I like the feel of Link's Awakening. I, I think that Kahulan Island is just a magical place to be in. And I think that what's what's lacking in terms of characterization for any in, individual character from a narrative perspective is made up for with, with I think, Link's core narrative, which again, it, it is simple, but I think it's elegantly simple, like the entire game. This is not sure. a very mechanically or narratively complex game, but I think it excels in being elegantly simple. Sure, yeah. And I do think that the story on, on the whole is, is great. I think it or, it's, you know, it's not great, but it does its job. It's certainly unique in comparison to the rest of the yeah. franchise, which is why I appreciate it, to be honest. Um, and just skipping the classic repeated Zelda tropes to just go with something more fresh with the wind fish, with collecting the instruments, which, you know, are, are kind of just Triforce pieces. Like, the, they're, they're all substitutes for the things that you're used to. Yeah. But the fact that they aren't the exact same you're not meeting an impa again and you know there's not a sheikah symbols everywhere and stuff like that instead you're getting the windfish and the instruments and and the animal villagers and stuff it is it is nice to get that refresh and and placing it in a dream and having the 
other Nintendo characters show up is, you know, I'm sure it was much more uh, mind blowing back in the nineties when the game came out originally. Um, and of course there, it's a one-to-one remake. So I, I don't, I'm, it's fine that they carried that over, yeah. but uh, I, it was just, they're, they're, it's fun, but I don't think it adds a ton to it. It kind of just feels a little bit out of place to me. Um, but on, on the whole, I think that the game in the world and his story and his characters are, are fine. I think it's simplicity just kind of turned me off a bit. Um, yeah. But again, it's a 90s game. It's a one-to-one remake of a 90s game. So I have to balance my, my qualms there a little bit. Yeah. Let's but, talk about gameplay. Yes, gameplay. Which, which is... Onto. Yeah, which is so I think that the uh, the updated aesthetic and everything helps a lot for for the for the narrative for actually Kahulan Island itself, and the one to one remake I think just modernizes what what is an otherwise very inaccessible game. Not in terms of actually playing yeah. it, you can get it on 3ds for four bucks, but whenever I tried to play it in the past, it is hard to get into. Sure. So this is a much more accessible and interesting version of it. But it's, from a game, especially because of the glued together overworld, not having things chopped up into bricks. Yeah. That I think that is the biggest change to this, and it really yes. helps. I mean, I didn't play the original, but I know what those are like, and and, and how hard it can be to wrap your mind around what a map's layout is like when you're only seeing it a chunk at a time. And instead, you get a widescreen version. You can see things off in the distance in, in some places, and it, that really does help. I think that's the best aspect of having this remake. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. But I think when you get to the gameplay perspective, there needed to be a little bit more done so I think that what's immediately apparent is the way that inventory management and movement is so limited. Yeah. So inventory management actually was updated a little bit. Yes. Where, where you know, like you can assign some items to the extra face buttons, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, this is a very common complaint of the game. You're always going to have Rock's Feather equipped. So why yeah. does it even take up a slot? You know, I, 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 I think that you should have taken Link's movement off of the uh, axis, off of the the directional axis, given him full 360 degree movement. I think you should have given him- 3,000%. Yes, between that and a more cohesive uh, inventory management, I I think would have immediately alleviated a lot of the the gameplay issues with the title. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously better than it was in in the Game Boy version. Have not having to switch to your sword and shield and having those, but here's the thing, I applaud the remake for doing that, but that's the bare minimum for uh, yeah. for modernizing a game. But if we're being completely honest, it, it does those things, which you know, good on good on it. But Rock's Feather, I never had that not on my Y button unless I was right. in a specific area of a dungeon where I didn't need it. Um, and on the whole, the inventory is fine. I, I do like some of the new items that gives you. I think having Rock's Feather is a lot of fun. I think it makes the um, world a little bit more interesting to interact with. Um, you can definitely cheese some jumps a little bit uh, where, you, where you just edge yourself onto the, uh, onto the edge of a thing and, and push yourself onto, on make the, in, into making the jump. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest item change. You know, Each game has its unique item, and Rock Feather, I think, is the one that... Uh, by the way, Rock... A character from Xenoblade Chronicles 2 who is an orange bird. I don't know if there was some inspiration there. Uh, <laughs> but um, on the whole, I think the biggest issue is having him jerkily chop to eight, in the eight directions instead yeah. of having 360 degree movement because the, the world is, is in those grids, but there's no reason for you not to be able to move a little bit more freely around them. I, I think that there probably is a pretty salient reason being sure. that uh, you're talking about being able to cheese little things with Rock's yeah. Feather. You could probably fucking break Kahulan Island if you if you weren't confined to the Axis because if you're making a tile for tile remake, yeah. the original was designed with, with this movement limitation in mind, right? Mm-hmm. But I think that invites mm-hmm. the, the, the follow-up then being, if you're going to modernize this game for 2019, you got to take Link off the axis. And if you're going to take Link off the axis, then you got to do more than that. You know, yeah. I, I don't think the fact that the map would be would be negatively impacted by free movement means that there shouldn't be free movement. I agree. There should yeah. be free movement and a more organic map. Yeah. I, I, so I understand why it's presented this way. I just don't think it feels particularly good in, in, in the scope of, of other remakes from this era. Yeah. Um, m- moving on from the, the gameplay of you know just basically controls to the dungeons which i think are just fine they're not particularly memorable um i found some of the larger ones to be just 
really frustrating and there's a lot of backtracking that goes on there's a lot of okay i have to remember that i drop down here and, and i'm not a dungeon guy on the whole i yeah. i i, I, I kind of just push through them and turn my brain off until I can get back into the overworld, which is much more engaging to me and was so in this game. But I, I found the dungeons to be a little too simplistic for my liking. Um, it, it's basically get through half the dungeon until you get the new item and then use the new item to get through the rest of the dungeon. And there's not a lot of growth in combining the mechanics um, throughout the progression of the game, which I found a little bit of disappointing. And it kind of meant that I, I'm not using some of these items that I that I got near the beginning of the game at the late part of the game. Um, and on top of that, I think the boss fights are really underwhelming. They're so, so easy. And the designs of the characters are just really boring and their names are so boring. And it just made it a really unmemorable to me to fight these bosses. Um, and it really just felt like, oh, yep, random random enemy number three. Time, time to whoop its ass in five seconds. Sure. Yeah, so I, I, I feel the same as you do about Zelda dungeons in general. Mm -hmm. I don't... I don't care that much, right? Yeah. You have incredibly memorable ones, especially when you get into like, you know, like your Twilight Princesses and Great Dungeons. And I even think Wind Waker is Great Dungeons, which apparently is unpopular. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the 3D Zelda games have really distinct dungeons. Um, but here, why I enjoyed them is because I didn't become stuck often. You know, sure. I felt like I was able to pretty intuitively work my way through them, which is always a plus for me with the dungeons. That said, I can remember pretty clearly a lot of gimmicks from other Zelda games that I played long before, you know, Link's Awakening, but right now I'm having a hard time bringing to mind a lot of the dungeon designs from, yeah. from the game now. But it speaks to the fact that also part of 2D Zelda's problem on the whole is that it uses the same fucking dungeon gimmicks in every <laughs> 2D Zelda sure. game. Yeah. With the exception of, you know, your Phantom Hourglass and your Spirit Tracks, which nobody talks about and are great mm -hmm. games. Um, but but I think that's symptomatic of, of, of 2D Zelda as a whole. So for me, the the my love of the game is from that overworld, which I think is super fun to explore. Yeah, and has plenty of its own little you know so more emergent puzzles that are that are fun to solve in place of the dungeons. I think the problem with the dungeons and the reasons why this these in particular aren't very memorable. Um, in my mind, comparing it to Minish Cap, which I think a has unique puzzles, b unique designs and and themes for its dungeons, and and c makes the dungeons feel like one cohesive puzzle is that these are just solve the puzzle one small puzzle in one room move on to the next one and there's not a there's a little bit of it there's not a lot of okay you need to go back and do this and and figure out sure. the entire dungeon as a whole um and, and i just found that a little disappointing and, and unfortunately that flows into the uh dungeon maker quote unquote with dape's little fucker house uh which which uses that to the worst degree which is put put the rooms that take the least effort to get to the thing so that yeah. it's easy because why would you want to oh i already know how to solve this puzzle which we can talk more about the about the dungeon maker later but i think that that kind of highlights the issues is that these rooms sure. are the dungeon rooms are so segmented and that they've just become uninteresting at some point, especially if you have to resolve some of them every time you go through it, if you're backtracking. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. And to the dungeon maker point, I don't even really know why they included it. I guess so we could have that cute little key art of like Dampe like staring at Link while he's fucking putting tiles together. It's the only good thing that came out of it because ultimately it's there and it's fun for the first time you do it, but I mean, there's I, just no. I didn't even. It. I only did his first four challenges, which is required to get one of the secret seashells. Those were. I. I did not like it at all. Maybe I'm not of the mind to put together a compelling dungeon, but I don't think yeah. this is. This is conducive to creating a compelling dungeon in the first place. The rooms aren't very interesting, and the format of it is just. It doesn't. It doesn't teach you super well. It's just kind of like, okay, yeah, yeah here's work like this. Hooray! Yeah, it was. It was a. It was a strange inclusion on the whole because it, it's not particularly additive it's not particularly yeah. deep um so i guess i guess yeah it is similar to the to the dungeons you know it's pulling it's pulling those pieces and it says a lot about what what, what it's taking its its elements from yeah um but what else do you want to talk about i i think we also have to mention the i think the one cool part about this game and its dungeons is the 2d uh 2d platforming sections that it has sure. which are completely unique from many other zelda game you know unless you want to say zelda 2 um but ooh, what if we reviewed zelda 2 no it's, i have I never even played it for a single moment 
hmm, well, might be fun to do a little mess around in. Um, but I think those are really charming. It's really unique. They're not yeah. short. They're not hard. Um, but it definitely gives this a unique spin that also continues with the theme of you being able to jump, which you can't do in any other, any other Zelda game, um, yeah. as far as I know. But uh, I, I think it's fun. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> but I, th- I think it's fun that they were included, and it definitely gives those sections a unique spin. Um, but they are, I mean, they don't add a ton. I just think it's fun that they're there. You can also jump in Ocarina of Time and Wind Waker and Majora's yeah, Mask. Yeah, press against the thing. Yeah, and yeah. Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword. Uh-huh. So fuck you. <laughs> but no, I agree. I, I, I think um, those 2D segments are just add to the game's charm. And, and for me, it's the charm of, of Link's Awakening that makes it so special. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one final thing I gotta say is that I was hearing a lot of stuff about how crappy the frame rate was on this game going into it, um, and yeah, I, I think it's pretty bad. It's it the game looks so good and so smooth when it is running well, and then it yeah. just jitters when anything happens on screen. And I found it so frustrating to want to, you know, charge through the world and watch everything go by so fluidly, and then have it go like, and and the characters moving like half the frame rate and. Uh, it's just it's just so disappointing that they couldn't get it to run better. So, I I didn't I didn't really find myself affected by by the the dropped frames. I mm-hmm. I think it's perfectly just, playable. Yeah, but I, I think the strength of the overall aesthetic really um, helped, and the fact that frame rate in a top down two D Zelda game, outside of you know like some key combat instances is not particularly integral sure i i think for instance the frame drops in breath of the wild are far more egregious than this no i agree that that said the the um the constrained scope of of this game makes those frame drops less excusable than breath of the wilds even if they are less impactful so Mm -hmm. i also saw a lot of people complaining about the vignette around the sides that blurs out things near the edge of the frame i thought it was fine did i i i barely ever found myself looking except for at link so i didn't really notice it but um i think it it adds a little bit of depth to the effect i don't think it needed to be as as harsh as it is but it's fine not a huge deal yeah i i think it just it contributes to the overall look of the game i didn't find it particularly bothersome i don't i don't play my games but looking at the outer 10 percent of my of my switches screen so um music pretty great i'm I, I, I'm a big fan of, of that aspect of the presentation as well. Um, and on the whole, like I said, I think it's the success of the overworld, the aesthetic, how, how good it feels to play outside of the, the constricted movement that really elevates this game for me. And it's the fact that it takes a lot of, um, you know, linked to the past design decisions and ideas and puts them in the context of Kahulan Island and all of its charm that makes this game so special to me. Yeah, for the music for me, I I gotta say I was a little bit underwhelmed because I'm so used to Zelda games having a host of really new memorable tracks that just add to the series extensive legacy of having new and memorable tracks. This was a lot of sort of, you know, yeah, I've heard that theme before, but it's remixed in this style or, or and you know, there's a there's a good amount of, of original music, but none of it I, I really felt myself felt myself humming. I don't think it, it expands that roster of, of great music very much, but it, it's fine. It's not, it's not egregious. It's not, it's not crafted world. Um, but, <laughs> but I, I think it's fine. I, I don't, I, I gotta say I was a little underwhelmed, but cause the Zelda series is so known for its great music throughout the entire series. Kind of, kind of like a 3d land in that way, at least in my perspective. Sure. Yeah. Tucker, clothing, clothing, clothing thoughts. What are you wearing today? I'm wearing my Dodongo shirt in honor of our review. Got my, I've got my NES shirt. It's a broken down NES controller. Um, I think this is a very good game. I think its simplicity didn't really, <clears throat> it didn't really contribute to me having a more engaging experience with it. I think some of the ways that it stayed too true to the original made it slightly underwhelming, but I think it is a very mechanically solid game. I think it's visually impressive. I think everything that the Zelda formula does in getting new items and uh, exploring new areas, it all works really well. But the, on the whole, I, I, I comparing it to Link Between Worlds and Minish Cap, which are two of my favorite games, two my, uh, my two favorite 2D Zelda games, this one just feels a little bit, a little bit lacking in some areas. 
I need to play the Mim Minimish cap. Yes. I actually own it on a Wii U Virtual Console, but hmm. maybe Nintendo will bring Game Boy Advance games to Switch Online eventually. Who knows? Probably not. Yeah. But no, I, I'm 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 a I'm a big Link's Awakening enjoyer. Uh, I I really love the uh, release and and you playing it again made me want to hop back in if I wasn't so busy with with other stuff right now. I think replaying the game on hard as I started to do a while ago sure. it would be a lot of fun. Um, but on the whole, I just think it's such a it's such a whimsical experience. And it's the word of the day for 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 Link's Awakening is, is whimsical. Um, Unshootal word of the day was whimsical. I was also really happy to see Grezzo take one of their Zelda remakes in this sort of more visually artistic direction. You know, when they worked on Ocarina and Majora, it's pretty much okay. Let's what's kind of one to one bring the N sixty four look to the three DS. Yeah, I like that. This is such a a, a distinct visual style and the note i want to end on is just fucking let grezzo make their own zelda game now <laughs> yeah. we get it they've they've remade three zelda titles for you they've done a bunch of other shit they co-developed triforce heroes let them make their own zelda game mm-hmm. i think it does it for overview thank you very much for watching everyone i'm very glad i'm getting through the zelda series we will be reviewing skyward sword hd when that comes out and whatever oh, yeah. else nintendo decides to crap out for the 35th anniversary um but I'll see you guys in more videos. I give Link's Awakening three cans of sales dog food out of Yoshi doll foot. Do you not get to write your own pieces anymore? No, I still write my own pieces. And I get paid a little bit more per piece now. Piece is what they refer to firearms as in crime (laughs) movies. That's a good good point. I started I started calling the collective grouping of sugar daddies and sugar mommies as sugar parental parental figures. Okay, uh, you talk. Okay. If you don't do the intro right now, I'm going to. All right. That's a really weak threat. <laughs> All right. Hello everyone and welcome back to Backlog Banter.